Did you know that Prisma now supports MongoDB? In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use Prisma to connect to MongoDB. Prisma is an open source ORM or object relational mapper for Node.js. It supports both JavaScript and TypeScript, and it really shines when using TypeScript. It helps you to write code that is both readable and type safe. Schemas help developers avoid data inconsistency issues over time. Now, while you can define a schema at the database level within MongoDB, Prisma lets you define a schema at the application level. When using the Prisma client, a developer gets the aid of auto-completing queries since the Prisma client is aware of the schema. Now, generally, data that is accessed together should be stored together in a MongoDB database. Prisma supports using embedded documents to keep data together. However, there may be some use cases where you'll need to store related data in separate collections. To do that in MongoDB, you could include one document's underscore ID field in another document. In this instance, Prisma can assist you in organizing this related data and maintaining referential integrity of the data. Now, we're going to take an existing example project from Prisma's Prisma Examples repository. One of the examples is a blog content management platform. This example uses a SQLite database, and we'll convert it to use MongoDB and then seed some dummy data. If you want to see the final code, you can find it in the dedicated GitHub repository linked in the description below. In this video, we'll use a MongoDB Atlas cluster. To get a free account and your first free forever cluster, check out our Getting Started with Atlas video. We'll first need to set up our environment variable to connect to our MongoDB Atlas database. We'll need our connection string, and we can get that from the Atlas dashboard. We'll go to Connect, and then Connect Your Application, and here is our connection string. So let's copy that. Now in VS Code, we'll create a new file, and we'll call it .env. And here we'll call our environment variable database underscore URL, and then we'll pass in our MongoDB database connection string that we just copied. Be sure to enter your database username and password. Now under the Prisma folder, let's edit the schema.prisma file. If you're using VS Code, be sure to install the official Prisma VS Code extension to help with formatting and auto-completion. And while you're in VS Code, also install the official MongoDB VS Code extension to monitor your database right from inside VS Code. In the data source DB object, we'll set the provider to MongoDB, and the URL is going to be our environmental variable that we just set up. And because we have the Prisma extension installed, we're getting this nice syntax highlighting, letting us know that something's not right. So in our user model, we need to update the ID. So in MongoDB, this is going to be a string instead of an integer. And the default is going to be auto. Since MongoDB names the ID field underscore ID, we're going to map the ID field to the underscore ID. And then lastly, we'll tell Prisma to use the data type of object ID for the ID field. And because we have the Prisma extension installed, we can also format this document. Let's do the same thing for the post ID. We'll also change the author ID to string and set its data type to object ID. Now this schema will result in a separate user and post collection in MongoDB. Each post will have a reference to a user. Now that we have our schema set up, let's install our dependencies and generate our schema. We'll save that file, open up our terminal. We'll do npm install and we'll do npx prisma generate. If you make any changes later to the schema, you'll need to run npx prisma generate again. Next, we'll need to seed our database. Now the repo comes with a prisma seed.ts file. This has some dummy data in it. So let's run the following command to seed our database. So let's run npx prisma db seed. This also creates the user and post collections that are defined in the prisma schema.prisma file. So now if we go back to our database and we browse collections, we should see a database with prisma posts and users. And because we made some changes to the ID data type, we're going to need to update a couple of things in our example code to reflect these changes. Now these updates are going to be in the pages, API, post, and publish directories in the brackets id.ts files. In these, you'll find a couple of issues here. The ID is referencing a number. Remember, the post ID used to be an integer, and now it's a string. So let's just remove the number call, and that one should work. Let's remove this one, and then let's go over to our other brackets ID, and let's remove the number from this one as well. And then we need to let TypeScript know that this is going to be a string. Now notice here in this file, whenever I hover over the response.json post, VS Code automatically knows that this post is of type post. And so if I wanted to return a specific field from this, VS Code automatically knows all of the acceptable fields. So no guessing required. This all comes from TypeScript and the Prisma extension. So now let's run the app. 
from the terminal, let's type npm run dev. And now we can open this up on localhost port 3000. So now we can see the data that was added to our database. From the main page, you can click on any post to see it. From here, we can delete the post. We can go over to our drafts page. We can see items that are in draft stage. We can click on these, and then we can either choose to delete or publish this draft. From the sign up page, we can add a new user. And then from the create draft page, we can create a new draft post. Now, all of these actions are performed by the Prisma client using the API routes defined in our application. Check out the pages slash API folder to dive deeper into the API routes. Prisma makes dealing with schemas in MongoDB a breeze. It especially shines when using TypeScript by making your code readable and type safe. It also helps to manage multiple collection relationships by aiding with referential integrity. I can see the benefits of defining your schema at the application level, and I'll be using Prisma to connect to MongoDB in the future. Let me know what you think in the MongoDB community at community.mongodb.com. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this.